All right, so welcome to Night Hacking at the Java Zone Conference. My name is Steven Chin. I work for the Oracle Technology Network, and I am interviewing Bert Ertman, and we're going to chat about microservices for mortals. Exactly. So wh why, why for mortals? What, what, are the, what do the immortals do with microservices? <laughs> um, well, it's actually a pretty good question, but um, well, maybe if you've been out on the internet and reading all the blogs and tweets about this thing called microservices, you might wonder, hmm, what did I miss? And am I the only one uh, not doing this stuff yet at my customer? And so basically what I wanted to do is come up with a reality check for people who are really thinking about going this way, but are not really sure what they're up against. Got it. No, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, and probably this is from some of your experience actually doing implementations of microservices and actual real live customer stuff. Yeah, exactly. So I've been around Java for the past 20 years now. And um, uh, so that makes me uh, really experienced in this field, right? And I've been involved in all sorts of system development and architecture and design stuff. So it's basically a talk from experience. And well, nowadays I... Um, I feel a bit, a bit that I'm, you know, I'm the old geezer in the project saying, <laughs> well, think before you do stuff, right? And uh, um, so I, I thought it was time for a reality check talk instead of all the, you know, sounds a bit negative, but all the false prophets um, who are promoting technology over actual um, architectural style, right? And, and uh, there's lots more to it than just yeah, running no, I mean Docker there's, there's always a trend to, if there's something that's new or trendy or something which is like um, very hot in the speaking circuit, you want to give it a try on your project and see if it's, if it's going to be the panacea. Yeah. Um, and microservices have been around long enough that I think there's enough real cases and things you can point to. So what, r what are like the top three takeaways? from your microservices for mortals pitch. Uh, yeah, I think there's there's even more than than 3, but I think that um uh, most importantly, I think it's very good that people understand what microservices style is actually um for. And I think it's it is um to deliver business agility through the use of technology. So it's not just a um technology party here. It's not a, it's not about running okay. Docker okay, in so production. Okay, so it kind of it kind of goes into how your you're defining and working with the business and the requirements and it gives you more agility in that sense. Well, exactly. I think the, the business model is really prevalent over the technology part, right? So if you see where it came from and you see, uh, if you look at the poster children like Netflix and Amazon, then they really used it to come up with either a very different business model than their competitors or they needed to really overhaul their existing business model. So for yeah. example, if you take Netflix, they were like a DVD selling shop selling you physical things mm. and now they have overhauled themselves into one of the biggest online entertainment sites yeah okay that makes sense so first takeaway it's a uh, it's about the business it's What's yeah it's business agility through technology What's number two? Uh, number two is that I think it's about there are a number of good things that you get uh, from doing a microservice style architecture, which are really promoting familiar design patterns. So, for example, single responsibility pattern, um, a modularity, for example, and, and, and a number of, of other things that enable you to um, adapt to change without breaking uh, either your application or stuff in your landscape. And although it's now part of this microservices movement, these are also things that you can do in more traditional architectural styles, right? So applying modularity or, or single yeah, responsibility no, I principle. I think just recently I, I saw you give some good talks on modularity at some conferences. Uh, yeah, so I, I uh, used to do modularity tu tutorials with, a, uh, with different technology stacks. And um, uh, that's also promoting um, people to think about enabling your architecture for change. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the key takeaways, that you should be able to change as rapidly as your customer or your business model uh, expects from you. And um, yeah, so, so there are some, some, some commonalities between uh, what a microservices architecture strives for and what you strive for with having just a regular uh, a modular architecture. Sure, absolutely. Okay, that's a good takeaway. And all right, one more. One more. <laughs> Okay, so um, one more is a very obvious one, uh, which is always cool to say on stage, which is there's no such thing as a free lunch. Well, maybe except for Java Zone, yeah, because they're doing I great on food. Uh, 
I, I, I've gotten my free lunch today. Yes. Okay, <laughs> it <but> was pretty <laughs> good. <laughs> okay, but in, in microservices uh, style architecture, there is no such thing as a free lunch. So uh, whether you're moving from an existing monolithic style application uh, to microservices, uh, or whether you're doing Greenfield, or whether you're coming from SOA, or wherever you're coming from, there's a big initial investment that you should make. And uh, so there's some technical stuff that need that you need to have in place, yeah. but there's also a really um, a big requirement of having your uh, solid CI/CD practice in place, uh, doing DevOps. If you're not doing that, don't even bother thinking about going the microservices way, because it it might take months or years alone just to get your DevOps uh, up and running. Okay, yeah. So there's a fair amount of technical debt, and probably some projects which are more suitable for moving to a microservices architecture based on where they are from an infrastructure standpoint? Um, yeah, probably. So that there is some natural attraction. So for example, if you've heavily invested into DevOps in the last couple of years. Yeah, and so if you're doing like continuous deployments and you... Exactly. Then, then there's like a natural attraction if, you, if, you, if yeah. you already made teams responsible for keeping stuff in your landscape up, then uh, doing it this microservices way might be very at attractive. And there's other things too. So for example, if you are with your wall against the back with your current outdated business model, right? There's mm -hmm. a there's a really an urge to change. So there will also be big changes required in your um, in your architecture, in your enterprise architecture. And so um, yeah, if you need to do rapid change and you don't know exactly where to go yet, then it's also a very appealing style because since you're doing modular stuff, you build everything um, ready to be thrown away, right? So it, it should be disposable building blocks. So so they, they're easy to adapt. You can just take them out without breaking other stuff. So it's appealing. Yeah, no, okay, so that's good. So it's, it's kind of like the, the basic idea is to give people a more down-to-earth view on what microservices are so you're not selling them you're not trying to get people converted but there are some things it's really good for yeah um but at the same time just wholesale adopting it because it's the, the new panacea is not also not the way to go no exactly and that's also one of the points that i try to, to get across like it's not like a architecture is not like a belt system right so so you must have been doing so at first and then afterwards you now you have to do microservices in order to get your black belt in architecture <laughs> right it's it, it it's not like a level up system it's it's more it's a different style and ex and a style is exactly what it is it's just a, a set of practices and tools and techniques that now have a name but you might be applying some of these tools and some of these styles in other architectural styles as well. So there's also no uh, one righteous way to do it, right? Yeah, no, cool. Okay, so that's very good. Um, what, what else is on the, the docket for you? So you're here at Java Zone now. Any other conferences or travel plans? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So I think Java Zone is the conference season opener for me. And after Java Zone, there will be others. Uh, Java One, obviously. So at Java yep. One, I'll be also be doing a microservices talk, and I also do a modularity tutorial. So if you're interested in how to get that done, then um, Are you gonna come to my barbecue? Uh, oh, if you're organizing it again, yeah, I'd, yeah. I'd love to. Saturday evening. Okay, cool. <laughs> it's one of the highlights of Java One, actually. Cool. And uh, after Java One, there is JFall in the Netherlands. So uh, since I stepped down from the uh, and the NL Jug board uh, last year, after ten years, um, I'm now allowed to do presentations at JFall again. So, <laughs> <laughs> so after ten years, I will be returning as nice. a presenter at uh, JFall. So that's something that I really look forward to cool. uh, in my own backyard. And um, after that, there will be other conferences as well. I don't have the schedule on top of my yeah, head. No, but no, 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 yeah. that's good. Okay, so you got lots of stuff lined up. I see you got the new stylish Apple Watch too. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> some <laughs> people have to be the early adopters to make it eventually affordable for others, uh, right? Yeah, that's yeah. good. That's yeah. good. You can you can break it in first. Yes. As you can exactly. see, I, um, I, I'm an anti, anti anything on my wrists. You're anti-smart or anti-watch? I'm anti, anti things which interfere with my ability to do coding. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot for the short interview. Okay, you're welcome. Bert, and um, you can watch the live interviews at nighthacking.com. Um, interact with us by tweeting to hashtag nighthacking. And thank you very much for watching the interview.